Here we go, Orunka first look, and she is gonna be dropping the first week of November. She is an Earth Warrior, believe it or not. Yes, even though she does look like fire, she is an Earth Warrior. And uh, for the most part, she does look pretty cool from our first impressions of her. You know, they did release her in game. There's been art. She's been teased as well. And it's about time, right? It's about time. The thing though, is that she's not a limited unit, believe it or not. She's not the limited for this episode. So I'm still trying to figure out who that might be. But uh, hopefully today we can get a slight insight as to whether or not she's gonna be good and she's gonna be worth pulling for your unit pool. Now, you know what we do, we usually pull every single unit, even though we are free to play, that's why I always recommend that you save. But now with Grace of Growth, it makes testing out units a lot better. So it's something that you can definitely do. Uh, you don't necessarily have to wait on content creators to pull them and then test them. Uh, you know, because if you end up pulling for waifu reasons, right, uh, you can always test them out with the grace of growth. So here we go, starting with Aranka. She is an Earth Warrior Scorpio, 102 base speed, so kind of slow, right? <laughs> really, really slow. So the good thing, though, is she has pretty good HP and pretty good defense, so she can definitely be built as a bruiser unit right she is a warrior warriors usually can be built pretty tanky her imprint concentration is attack so if you are planning on pulling for her you could potentially skip out on the triple s right because her imprint concentration isn't insane right it's not like crit chance or anything like that or speed right we haven't gotten a speed one in forever but uh it's attack so it's not uh it's okay if you don't pull multiple copies of her. Uh, so let's see what her skills look like because, you know, ever since they teased her, you know, I was always trying to figure out exactly how she was going to work, how she's going to counter the current meta, right? Because right now, uh, with Hua Young coming in with nerfs, right, she has the potential to, uh, to be broken, right? Well, so let's see, let's see. So we got her skill two, Wild Instinct. Attack increases by 30%. When attacking, cannot trigger a critical hit at the end of an enemy's turn. When the target is granted a barrier, increases combat range of the caster by up to 10%. So this one, it has that barrier, right? That barrier condition. Now, you know, I don't like skills that have conditions. And I don't like skills that have conditions because sometimes they're completely locked behind what you want to accomplish in game and having that condition actually available, right? So here, when the target is granted a barrier. So this only works when the opposing team or unit has a barrier. So that means that she's never going to get this CR push if there's no barrier. Okay, keep that in mind. She's always gonna get that uh, that 30%, right? Because that's just built in, but she's never gonna get that CR push if they don't have barriers. So right away, she's gonna be really good into barriers or at least be able to cut as you saw there. So skill number three here, a thrashing in the prayer. This is on a uh, five turn cooldown. You can mull this down to four turns. I'm assuming after increasing attack for, of the caster for two turns. So she gives herself an attack buff. Runs up to the enemy to attack. When the enemy is defeated, inflicts extinction. So this kind of reminds me of Hua Young, right? She can't crit. She can potentially deal insane damage. Can't crit you don't need crit damage can go full attack hp defense speed right and then now she's penetrating the target's defense by 70 percent okay so there's no condition there right there's zero conditions for her penetrating defense by 70 percent now she does get 
an increase to the damage that she deals on her S3 if they have a bear. So this condition, again, can potentially make her hit like a wet noodle, right? It just depends on what her multipliers are. You are going to have to max this skill out, right? As well as her S2. Well, you know what? Maybe her S2 you could potentially skip on because it's only going to work against bears. And it's the same thing with the extra damage or increasing damage dealt here. It only works against bears. So keep that in mind. But uh, penetrating defense by 70% can be potentially broken. She's giving herself attack buff, penetrating defense. And then if they have a barrier here, so they're going into the Senya. Now, if you noticed, wait, 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 let's, let's go back just a bit. Because if you noticed, she's not on her own artifact. So we haven't talked about her own arty yet, but she's on a little queen's huge crown. Now, that artifact actually increases the damage dealt when the unit has a barrier. So keep in mind the damage that she's doing here. Let's see, how much damage does she do? She's what, 15k HP, this Aronka? So she did almost 20k damage. Now, keep in mind, she has attack buff. She has that artifact that increases damage dealt against barrier units. And she has that condition from her S3 that increases the damage dealt if they have a bear. So she has three things that are helping her deal 19k damage. That doesn't seem that great. <laughs> Honestly, if you need three things to deal that much damage, right? Think about it. Uh, I think it's the, the Little Queen's Huge Crown. I think it boosts, like if you fully max it out, I think it's like, Increases damage dealt by 30% against barrier enemies, something like that. And so she's getting, let's say, a 30% damage dealt boost. We don't know the multiplier for her S3, some more damage there. And then she's getting attack buff, right? And so she needs all of that to deal 19k damage. I don't know. <laughs> to me, that doesn't seem that, that crazy, right? But if we do manage to kill... Extinction, right? So no a Ravi revives there. Let's take a look at her skill one dagger throw. So throws a dagger at the enemy with a 50% chance to each to inflict bleeding effects for two turns. So 50% chance for bleeding. This kind of reminds me of Lilibet, right? Where she hits you with the ass two bleeding and then she has the opportunity to uh, I think they changed it to where she gets an extra turn now, uh, or she got a CR push in the past, but she does have a successful attack, has a 50% chance to activate expose as an extra attack. So S1, this kind of reminds me of like Ilanov, right? Where you have the probability or the chance to hit with your S2 instead of your S1. So I don't know, we'll see how this works. Expose can only be activated once on the caster's turn. So this eliminates counter builds, right? Procking this off of counters, uh, which you can do with Ulnav, by the way. But Expose here attacks enemy and recovers health of the caster. Amount recovered increases proportional to the caster's attack. So based on Expose, she's gonna need a lot of attack, right? Who does that remind you of, right? Why young? Why young? But the grass, why young? We can soul burn this for 10 souls, and there is a 100% chance to activate expose. So, not too bad. Uh, we do have bleeding, which does a little bit of damage, right? And then you have a 50% chance to activate expose. It's a 50 50. You know, I don't like these percentages, right? Because there's going to be plenty of times where you lose that coin toss and you don't activate. But the way that you can counter that is to soul burn, right? It's 10 souls. It is actually pretty cheap. It's letting her go into that expose right after she attacks, right? Increases, so it's like the two attacks. So she did what, 6K? Let's see, uh, on the S1 first, she did 4K, so let's say 5K she did, 5K, and then she did another 6K after that. So she did about 10,000 damage 
from just her S1, not including the bleed damage, right? Which isn't going to be insane, but that's that's a lot of damage, right? That's a lot of free damage that you're getting. So it might be depending i guess depending on how you want to play her it might be better to run her on uberius too right but here is her artifact it is a warrior exclusive artifact sword of autumn eclipse again knocking out of the, knocking it out of the park with this portrait art for the artifacts but this increases attack of all eyes by five percent and increases hit chance of the caster by 20 percent now this still might be useful on her because she does want to land successful hits on her s1 in order to proc that extra attack right but if you're soul burning her s1 each time then you don't really care about that 50 percent, right so i don't know it's a little weird when they don't showcase the units with their own artifact right in the showcase here that she's wearing uh that queen's crown artifact you know i wish they would showcase them at least with their own artifacts just so we can see what that kind of looks like right but i mean she does look pretty cool we are going to be pulling for her 100 now is she a unit that you should be pulling and using your resources on i don't know i to me the conditions are what put me off from saying yes go ham go all in uh, because she's not always going to get that extra damage now maybe she does insane amounts of damage without the artifact and without that barrier increasing her damage right but who knows we'll see she definitely does a lot of damage on the s1 but keep in mind she was going up against a chew which also gives her elemental advantage right uh and uh all of that adds up, right? It adds up and it could definitely inflate her numbers. But, uh, you know, we got to kind of wait and see how she plays out. Uh, we'll see exactly how much damage she deals. Uh, and, you know, for the most part, she at least looks pretty cool. Has a really nice in-game sprite, in-game lobby animation. And, you know, hopefully this... Uh, huge crown artifact isn't going to be the best in slot uh, but i think we have a few that we might be able to use but let me know your thoughts about orunka are you going to be pulling for her day one let me know your thoughts in the comment section below like always if you haven't enjoyed the video hit that like button if you haven't subscribed hey think about subscribing it really helps the channel grow and reach more people like you who like content like this like always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time peace